In this video, we continue our series configuring search with configuring content sources. So first of all, we go to manage service applications. And now we can see our search service application. We'd probably like to get search to crawl certain types of content. And we do that by going to things called content sources and creating some of these. There's one content source we get free, if you like. This is the local SharePoint sites content source. If I edit this one, it has a name, the URLs it's going to crawl, what it should crawl, and then how frequently it should crawl. Now we can configure this to crawl in the good old fashioned way of SharePoint 2010 and come up with a crawl schedule. I can also enable continuous crawls and say, well, continue and crawl and notice any change. Now that effectively has crawl waiting and noticing to see if anything has changed in this content source. Now not all content sources can tell SharePoint, hey, I've got a new file for you to crawl, but of course SharePoint ones can. So let's say, okay, there we go. That's continuous crawling. If I want to get an update on crawl, behavior, I can pull down this drop down here and pick view crawl log. And here you can see how long it's spent indexing, how many things it's found, how many things it's got warnings about, and so on. So content sources represent the kinds of thing we can index. We can have many actual content sources of the same type if we want to, if we need to have different schedules, etc, for crawling. So content sources represent the kinds of thing we can index and I can have many different content sources of the same type if I have different schedules or different groups of things to index. But I like to create a content source looking at something different. Notice I can create a content source for a SharePoint site. For websites, that's any HTTP source we want to index internally or externally. File shares, exchange public folders, BCS line of business data, and also custom repositories for which I've bought some kind of custom adapter. I'm going to go with file shares. Call that shares. And now I can put in the addresses. So maybe I have on 10.0.0.2, that's my database server. Maybe I have a file share there that I would like to connect to. Next, I can pick whether it should crawl the folder and all the subfolders or only the root folder. And then what kind of schedule? Notice this one won't inform us if there's a new item. I can't have a continuous crawl on a file share. So note I can have an incremental crawl of maybe every four hours. That's what's changed since the last incremental crawl. Or I could come up with my own schedule. I can pick a full crawl once again every four hours or maybe create a schedule to say once a day, daily, every day at 12 a.m. And then I can specify a content source priority so that SharePoint knows which ones are more important. I'm going to bias this towards the content in SharePoint being more important, so I can say OK to that. And when I'm ready, I could have this crawl our file share. So let's just see what's in our file share. That was 10.0.0.2 file share, and I have three files. So I'd like to get that to crawl now, and I can start a full crawl. We can see what kind of load this puts on our server. If I go to performance, we can see that any crawl activity is going to use some RAM and some CPU. If I head over to details, we can see MSS DMN.exe. These are Microsoft SharePoint search daemons. And if these are running, we can see how much RAM they're using and how much CPU. When there's not an awful lot to index, there won't be an awful lot going on with these processes. When you do have a lot of content and it's indexing right now, then you can expect that to grow to a significant amount of memory and CPU ute. Let's close that. So notice how our file shares are completing their crawl. If I hit refresh, that will update. Now they're both effectively waiting. So let's go to a SharePoint site and perform a search. So I have two sets of files. One set of files has information about 
producing videos with Office. And another file is effectively lorem ipsum text. So I'm expecting to get zero results back here because my documents about videos were in a file share and here I'm just searching within one site collection. So now I'm going to search for my lorem ipsum text. And that's pretty quick and I get my results back along with a page preview which is quite nice. This preview functionality used to be only available in fast search uh, and it's now available in SharePoint server search across all versions of the platform. So how can I go about finding my files on the file share? Well, for that, I'm gonna need a search center. It's a good idea to create a site collection somewhere where everyone can get to it with a suitable URL so that people can search from that one location. So I'm gonna to go to central admin and I'm gonna to go to create site collections. And this is going to be called search. And we can put this under sites search. And I can pick the appropriate template, the enterprise search center. It can be owned by good old spadmin. Then let's say okay. Cool, so that's created. Let's now use our new search center. If I click on the URL, we end up at our new search center. So now we're going to try in our search center to search for our video documents. If I hit return, very quickly we have the search results from our file share 10.0.0.2 slash file share. In this video, we have seen how to configure content sources. We've configured one for all the content in our SharePoint document libraries and one for an external file share. 